Hi all, Darren Hansbro from DA Components. I'm going to do a video on wire connectors and the best crimping tool that I know and the best connectors that I've learned over the years, which I think are the best on the market to set date. So I'm going to do the video on, I'm going to show you a crimping tool that I think you should put this in the bin because it's just absolutely shocking. So if all the guys are using this, this is probably the wrong one or not the best one to use because a prime example on this one, you can actually see on the bullet connector, the person has used it and all it does is just clamps in one, one side in the middle. It doesn't clamp on top of the actual outer sleeve of the actual uh, the wire. And sometimes if you push down too hard when you do clamp it, you can actually split the connector in half. Most of the time, you think you've got it connected and it just slides off like so. So that gives you a bad connection straight away. So my go-to tip, if you've got this, just don't use it. I would put that aside and I would invest in a ratchet stamp cl uh, clamp, clamp and tool so you can actually see the colours of the different sizes of connectors which we use the bullet connectors which uh, I think are the, the go-to one and what you do is you just slide it in where the colour is and you just clamp it on and that holds it on ready for when you cut your cable to slot into there and then you crimp it on and we're going to do that right now so I've got my ratchet cramp ready for the connector in I'm going to cut the cable with a, a wire connector, just a standard wire a cable connector. But now I have to cut that cable off to get the copper sleeve. I've got some wire cutters. So you want about 10 mil of wire that you're going to cut off. Crimp it over and just slide it off and it's off straight away. What I tend to do is just wrap it round. Put that aside and then this is all ready because you've just primed it ready with the connector in the bullet connector then you just slide it in until it stops you push down on the ratchet crimping tool and release and what you'll find on this one it's crimped the actual the the copper cable on the actual bullet connector and it's also crimped the outside of the connector on the outside of the sleeve so that's got two connections. It's got the cable itself, which is the, the actual joint, and then it's connected on the outside of the sleeve. So that is the better connection instead of the old type. So that's how I would do connectors. So I'll do it again. So I'm just going to cut this cable off. This old bullet one which being used on them rubbish ones that I've called. I'm going to take the outer sleeve off, about 10 mil. Push it down, just pull it off, wrap it around so it's nice and clean. And then the same again, what I'm gonna do is get the bullet connector, put it in the blue, and it's ratcheted, ready to go, it's all primed, and then you just slide the copper cable in till it stops, ratchet down, release. I always do double check, see if it doesn't slide off, because you will get the odd one, it will slide off. But that there has got a firm connection. And then I'm just gonna do exactly the same for the next one, the red one. Cut it off. Get the cable cutter, about 10 mil. Slide it off, wrap it round. This time I'm gonna pull a bullet connector on. Get the ratchet tool, put it in the blue. Slide, so, and prime it ready. Slide the cable in till it stops, latch it down, release, just double check, it's, it's clamped onto the outside of the sleeve, and then sometimes they always look inside, so it just looks like a nice clean connection. Last one, just gonna cut this one off, get the cable cutter, about, about 10 mil again, Oops. pull it off, wrap it round, put the bullet connector on again, get the ratchet tool, Put it in the blue one, whichever size connections you can use. You can use the red ones, which are a little bit smaller, 
or you can use the yellow ones. There's little dots there and it tells you which one you have to put it in. Clamp it down once it's been pushed in and that's the connectors actually made on the controller. Now, once you've sorted all your nice, clean, dry connections, uh, the best one uh, I always advise is how to fit a fuse holder. So the fuse holder is always on the red cable or the positive cable that's going to the battery. And simply all you need to do with a, a fuse holder, you just cut the cable and you slide it in one side and then you, you push the lever over. And this is where you need a pair of pliers and just gently squeeze that connection together to you the click. You, or most time you can feel it when you actually push it, press it in and just give that a little bit of a tug. That's not coming out. Then go to the other side of the cable, exactly the same thing. Push it in, push the, the lever over. It's got a little steel bar inside there. So once it makes that connection, clamp it over. And that's the fuse all fitted. And then obviously you said fuse that you need, you just push it in and ready for the, the next uh, application. The best thing I can talk about fuse holders is it needs to be fitted closest to the battery as possible. This stops from uh, voltage spikes. And if anything did happen, there's only that short of cable that would actually burn out. I wouldn't fit the fuse closer to like the controller because it's got all that length of cable to burn. If anything, it would only burn that little bit of cable. That's the, the best tip I can ever fit. A fuse holder. So that's my go-to uh, ratchet style uh, clamp clamping tool. That's what I would use. And then I think that's about it. Uh, wire cutters, uh, cable strippers, so it strips them. And I think that's about done. Any more questions or anything like that, please feel free to email on the website. Thank you very much. Darren Ansborough from DA Components.